So today we're in the eviction court of Justice of the Peace, Lance Cancino, out of Lubbock County. We'll be reviewing an eviction matter where a tenant raises an interesting defense. She requested a reasonable accommodation due to a health matter. Is that enough to win her case? Let's get started. We are here for evictions. Everyone who will be speaking to me, either a defendant or plaintiff, that is landlord or tenant or witnesses will need to be sworn in this morning. If you'll please raise your right hand. You solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help you God. So let me give you a little background on the case. The plaintiff actually showed up to the courtroom, whereas the rest of the parties appeared via Zoom. You'll notice, for example, that the judge is here the defendant is right here. Down here is a guy who never says anything. But right here is the defense attorney that was uh, an attorney from the legal aid for uh, this area of Texas who is representing the defendant, the tenant in this case. Now you don't see the plaintiff uh, who is being represented by the assistant manager of the apartment community. Now this particular community is for students and the contract in this case was signed by uh, a student attending college and who is seeking to break her lease due to her health concerns. So here are the basic facts that are uh, attested to by the plaintiff. The tenant who signed a lease in or about the month of July has failed to pay rent for the month of February and the month of March. And so the judge is hearing the case facts from the plaintiff's side. But the defendant is about to present their defense. This is go. student housing. Uh, Ms. Hyatt's experiencing health issues and as a consequence had requested a reasonable accommodation for the student housing because she needs to actually be living in Mansfield right now to receive the health care that she needs. Her situation has changed. She did notify the apartment complex. We wish to be able to show two things. One, Your Honor, that the notices were improperly given in this matter. The notice to vacate was not given consistent with the regulation. She did request a reasonable accommodation and pursuant to the lease, they are supposed to accommodate it, her, but they failed to do that. So the attorney for the defendant raises two claims. First, and she claims that the notice to vacate is improper and that the plaintiff will be unable to prove that it delivered notice to vacate in accordance with its own petition. Additionally, she argues that the defendant, the tenant, was entitled to a reasonable accommodation due to her health issues. She states that because the plaintiff failed to offer a reasonable accommodation upon the request of the tenant, that the petition fails because the landlord was not entitled to demand possession without first attempting to accommodate this reasonable request from the tenant. You received no no notice of, uh, of, of this. So part of the argument from the plaintiff is that the tenant failed to give proper notice to the landlord regarding her condition. Additionally, the plaintiff argues that she had no idea that the defendant was no longer residing on the premises. This poses a problem for the plaintiff because the plaintiff in their own petition states that the notice to vacate was personally delivered by hand delivering the notice to the defendant directly. The petition actually notes that the method of notice to vacate delivery was hand delivery. That's inconsistent with what the testimony that we're hearing today. I don't know if she was the one who stuck the notice on the door um, I'm unclear if we're talking about hearsay, but the petition notes a different method of delivery than the testimonies noting today, Your Honor. Now the assistant manager for the landlord testifies that the notice was affixed to the door of the apartment unit. She goes on to testify that she never actually entered the apartment unit. And we know that Section 24 of the Texas Property Code allows various ways for the delivery of a notice to vacate to be made. If a notice is left on a door, Chapter 24 of the Property Code requires that it be affixed to the inside of the main entry door. From the landlord's own testimony, that just didn't happen. 
hand delivery and email. Landlords, as always, we welcome you to follow us on our Instagram page. If you're not a member yet, join us on Facebook. Uh, and if you enjoy what you see here, give us a thumbs up. Click that like button. We enjoy that very much. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. Now, she also says that she emailed the notice to the defendant. But you're going to see that the judge doesn't even ask about the email notice because email is not a proper method of delivery under Chapter 24 of the Texas Property Code. You'll see here that evidence is introduced regarding the request for the reasonable accommodation. And um, she reached out and asked for an accommodation before the eviction was filed. And the response to the request for accommodation was a filing of eviction. Um, so I'm happy How to share- How did she the, reach out? Um, it was by email. Um, I can share um, the email that she sent as long, uh, in addition to the letter from her doctor. I am uh, looking at the, uh, the letter uh, it said, to whom it may concern, it was from uh, Heart Place, Medical City. It said, Brianna Hyatt is unable to live away from home and family due to her medical condition and also due to appointments that are needed in order to treat and follow her condition. Is that the letter you're speaking of? Yes, Your Honor. In addition, Ms. Hyatt herself had communicated and specifically re requested a reasonable accommodation in email form. She said in the letter, you have a policy requiring tenants to stay through the end of their lease or pay penalties, fees, and fines to end the lease early. I'm requesting an accommodation to that policy. Um, so I have a heart condition called POTS. Um, it's called, it's postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome as well as autonomic dysfunction. My heart is pretty bad. And so I've been seeing a cardiologist because of this. I'm unable to walk for very long. So I was unable to live in the apartment. Apparently the tenant has a heart condition. She testifies to these facts. Now, she's not asked to introduce medical evidence because a witness can testify to their own medical condition without necessarily delivering expert testimony. In this case, she testifies that she has a certain heart condition and that her doctor has requested that she seek medical attention back under his care uh, in a different city. As such, she cannot reside in the unit that she has leased because of the need for medical attention outside of the city. You'll see that the defendant introduces evidence of a letter from the doctor, which the judge reads, and then asks when this information was delivered to the plaintiff. She understands that the written notice was February 15th, so she's willing to pay the February rent. She just wants an accommodation to leave for the rest of the, the rest of the lease term. I mean, again, you know, like like I said, the the request for accommodation, there is a provision within the lease. It's page on page four. And I understand that historically they've only seen requests for physical modifications when someone's on the third floor. But the Fair Housing Act, Your Honor, is much, much broader than that. Their policy, in fact, on their lease on page four also notes that reasonable modifications will be provided as well as accommodations will be provided. So it's not just specific to modifications. Modification is the physical physical altering for folks with physical disabilities, but it does ask for accommodations as well. Would, uh, would you be willing to work out an accommodation with uh, the, the tenant? You would. The judge entertains the reasonability of a request for this accommodation. I'm going to dismiss the case at this time so that you can work out that, and I'm going to base that on the notice uh, having simply been posted on the door and not uh, not any other reason. And that, that will free you to, uh, to negotiate and then work and then hopefully we don't have to see this case again. The plaintiff testifies now under oath that she is willing to allow for a reasonable accommodation. The judge dismisses the case on the grounds of bad Noted. The testimony from the assistant manager is that the notice to vacate was affixed to the main entry door. But the argument of counsel for the defendant is that the petition states otherwise. You notice that the judge reads the petition and finds, in fact, that the petition states that notice was delivered personally to the defendant in hand. The live testimony contradicts what's written in the petition. Had the plaintiff amended their petition to include notice by a fixing uh, of the notice to the door, it's possible that the court would have allowed 
that notice. However, there's a technical error with the way that notice was delivered. The assistant manager says she never made it inside the unit. For notice to be proper to be posted on the outside of the door, assuming all other conditions are met, the landlord is still required to deliver the notice by mail the same day as the posting on the outside of the door. And because that didn't happen and no testimony was introduced, I don't believe even if the petition had been changed that this uh, particular landlord would have been allowed to proceed with the notice as it was presented to this court. The defect of the notice was enough to essentially ruin the entire filing, but you're also going to notice that the judge did allow the argument of a reasonable accommodation to be introduced. I believe that this also was strong evidence why this petition was just not going to succeed. Please note that federal law prohibits a landlord from denying a reasonable request. You see, the testimony here for a reasonable accommodation is argued that, generally speaking, a reasonable accommodation is some physical accommodation. Perhaps a ramp is installed to accommodate this particular tenant. But that's not what happened here. Instead, the tenant asked that the reasonable accommodation be an early termination of the lease based on the fact that she could not receive medical care from the location of the leased premises. She had to go back home. And because her doctor was out of the city and her care was out of the city, her request was that the lease be terminated so that she could seek the medical care that she needed. You'll notice that the judge did not technically make his ruling based on this request. Instead, he specifically made his ruling based on notice. He also directly asked the landlord whether or not they would be willing to discuss a reasonable accommodation with the tenant. And the assistant manager agreed that they would. All in all, landlords, it's important that if you are confronted with notice of a request for a reasonable accommodation by someone who can validly prove a legitimate health issue, you have to pay it some mind and you have to at least entertain the fact that some reasonable steps can be taken on your part to accommodate the tenant. If your answer is an absolute no, it's possible that this will be used against you in some proceeding in the future. If you have questions about reasonable accommodations and what the law requires from a landlord when such a request is received, give us a call or send us an email. For additional videos on the topic of notice to vacate, you can check out what we've got right here. I'm sure you'll find something very informative. And until next time, landlords, happy leasing.